So from your point of view, if we go to a strategic, economic or political, but also legal level, what works well between European and Chinese partners and what are more the challenges? So we have seen that between the US and China, some understandings are different, also between US and EU uh, for that matter. What works well in the cooperation between EU and China? Well, in, in any cooperation, I think you, you need to have uh, profitability for both sides mm -hmm. so it has to be a win-win yes and um, it it should never be one uh, one one party uh, colonizing the other party or or things like that you know mm -hmm. yeah. so this is very very important as a as a starting point mm -hmm. um, and if you if you take it from there then um, I think many cooperations can be uh, uh, effective and can be uh, uh, can be good, but it's also very important that all parties uh, try to explain to the other side, like what is their real objective. Okay. And this is this is sometimes difficult. This is sometimes difficult. Sometimes the Europeans don't want to really say like ah you know we just want to make money in china and uh, then we get out and then it doesn't work in mm -hmm. the end uh all the way around there can also be uh, uh chinese politics you know uh that uh, it, it's unclear for the europeans like what is the real intention and the real needs therefore mm -hmm. of of the other side and then it can also be very difficult so this is also about I think, in my experience, is is just about being very, very clear. Like, uh, uh, what do you want? What are your boundaries? Mm -hmm. uh, what can you do? What can't you do? Mm -hmm. So, a couple of years ago, I I was involved in the uh, transfer of um, equipment for um, uh, uh, spacecraft, uh, and it it went from Europe to China, mm -hmm. and um, uh, then. At, at, at the start of the uh, cooperation, there was a very complicated middleman uh, uh, position. Mm -hmm. So there was a, a, a middleman and uh, he was trying to make, make big money uh, mm -hmm. of this uh, state organization in Europe, uh, selling uh, a piece of equipment uh, uh, for space to uh, to space uh, institute in china so mm -hmm. from government to government but there was this middleman in between and they tried to they tried to trick uh, both sides the middleman okay. tried to trick both sides by um, forging documents also and uh, mm -hmm. asking for uh, a lot of money uh, uh, and then uh, they would they would sell it for another price and then you know they would the difference would be theirs mm -hmm. and then at, at at one point, we didn't find it, this out right away, but we found out that the middleman was making things more difficult. So then uh, the European uh, state organization talked to the Chinese state organization directly. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we sat down, uh, 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 or to be correct, I sat down with the party secretary mm -hmm. in Beijing and we talked about this. And then uh, we both concluded that uh, the middleman uh, should go okay. because it was not in you know it was not in the joint interest it was not in the win-win for the both uh, uh, state uh, state organizations mm -hmm. uh, and so we did and then we found out about the forgeries and this and that you know once he got we got rid of him and then the ceo of the uh, european organization talked to the ceo of the uh, Chinese organization, and they found out that these documents had been forged and that the numbers were different, etc. Mm -hmm. So you, it's it's also about, in in my experience, if you make it too complicated, that's also a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. If you do not, if you do not simply say like, look, you know, this is what we can deliver, mm -hmm. uh, this is what we need, and um, uh, we can, if it's not dual use, we can supply. Uh, if it's dual use, uh, also able to use it for defense, we cannot supply. You know, if you're mm -hmm. clear about these things, there won't be an issue. Yeah. If you make it complicated, it it will almost certainly be uh, uh, be a disaster. That's also more or less building up upon your like the 
also you said that in the Silk Road event that uh, the best approach uh, in dealing with China on a strategic level also, but also on a very concrete project level is a media media like a mediation approach uh, so mediation usually means that you cr try to create a win-win situation just like you mentioned you try to explain your basic like uh, motives what are you there to do what is your goal uh, where is your red line what can you deliver what can't you deliver being very clear and not trying like an arbitration to trick the other party into some kind of agreement where one is the winner or the loser could you elaborate a little bit on that system and why would it be helpful uh, for cooperation between EU and China? It's, it's good to understand that the uh, uh, arbitration system with the winner and the loser and the big award where you also get uh, all the money from the lawyers back and uh, etc. Um, that system is, is not like what would be, uh, in my experience, usual in, in Chinese conflict, uh, uh, in a Chinese conflict, in a Chinese conflict, uh, uh, the ones that I know, uh, if you if you really go to court, is 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 almost is, is as as a Westerner, for instance, is almost suicidal for for the relationship anyway, yeah. uh, because you will, you know, in. In, in in Holland and in England, you can have a fight and then after that have a beer and be best friends. But that's not that's not really how it how it works uh, in my experience in China. And mm -hmm. so you have to you have to negotiate your way out of a conflict. If you uh, uh, I also the the way I see Chinese people, they they are less much less aggressive mm -hmm. uh, than uh, Western people also in in traffic or whatever you know it it maybe it looks chaotic to us beijing traffic or shanghai traffic but in reality everybody's going around the other mm -hmm. and it's it's not driving right into them mm -hmm. and in 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 the west it's much harder yeah you know in in we 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 are much much more forceful in mm -hmm. this is my right and i want to drive here mm -hmm. that's not that's not that you know you, in china you give way Mm -hmm. So it's the same in, in conflicts in business. So you, you think about if you think about traffic, it's maybe it's uh, it's a, a metaphor that that will if people have been to China that that they will think like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, like that. OK, so mm -hmm. and it's really different. It, it's the same way as that. It's different driving a car in Holland from driving a car in China. Yeah. I know what you mean because for me I usually I find traffic in China less dangerous than for example in Germany in, in Germany if if the the speed limit is 50 and somebody falls on the street it will be really dangerous because people will drive 50 they they're not used to reacting to somebody uh, out of like the normality whereas in China people won't even notice they'll just drive around it and that's it there's no, there is not even a, like a break in the traffic flow or anything. So I like your, I like this picture. Yeah. And, and it's the, it's the same in business, really. Mm -hmm. It's the same in business. So if you keep your own course and if you are very level headed in that, and if you are very strict about, ah, you know, I can, I can drive a hundred year or whatever, mm -hmm. it, it won't work in China. Mm -hmm. Okay. And on the other hand, still, um, there is there is also there are also voices saying that, for example, on a on a EU level or on a like strategic level, um, the EU is too complacent with Chinese China. They they don't really like make their red line known. They're more like yeah, let's have good relations, but they're very careful to 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 stick to their core needs or core demands or what's possible and what's not so so actually it, it could go going both ways on one hand in the european i i think that especially the central european mentality or the german dutch belgian austrian maybe these countries they have this mentality of okay we have the law here and we're allowed to do this and why is it not possible on the other hand, also on the strategic level, it seems that uh, states are giving in a lot of power to China. They're not really defending 
uh, their backyard, if you want to use a, a picture again, what, what do you think about that also in legal terms? How could you do that? I think it's not about, in, in, the, same, uh, in the same philosophy as we've just discussed about the traffic, I, I think if you, China is very big, you know, it's, it's, it's too big for a country like Holland to dictate. Mm -hmm. If we want to dance with China, you know, China leads and we have to follow. Mm -hmm. we're, we're just a very small country just on the edge of the world, something like that. You know, mm -hmm. I, I understand that. Mm -hmm. But most Dutch people do not understand that. They mm -hmm. think that the Chinese have to play by our rules mm -hmm. and that uh, they, have, they also have to play by our conflict rules. Mm -hmm. If they would be less lazy mm -hmm. and the Western people, the European people, and if they, if they would go to China regularly, Mm -hmm. then they would have a relationship where there would be no trouble. Mm -hmm. But if they, if they make out uh, a letter of intent, for instance, and then mm -hmm. stay out of China for three years, don't meet anybody, don't mm -hmm. have any follow-up conversations, and then come in and then they say, yeah, there's this letter of intent, you have to do this, you have to mm -hmm. do that. It doesn't work. Yeah. It just doesn't work. So it's about, if you want to do business in China, and this is also on the strategic level for the countries, you have to invest heavily in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's not about one time a state visit and then forgetting about it uh, yeah. until five years later. It, it, it really doesn't work yeah. like that. Yeah, we can see that clearly because we have one random strategy paper somewhere flying around, but it doesn't really have any traction on, on the relationships. And uh, you can also see that China prefers the option of uh, bilateral uh, exchange and cooperation. And yeah, we, we see little like decisive or, or medi also mediative like cooperation between the EU and China. It's, 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 there's so, somehow it's, it's a difficult situation. I, I'm not sure whether or what, how could it be solved? It's a mentality issue, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's it's also a little um, arrogance on both sides, you know, mm -hmm. both sides, they, they, they stick to their own system. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to choose, mm -hmm. like, um, uh, do is it more important for me also from an internal uh, political point of view to keep to my own system, which is fine, you know, it's a choice. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, uh, th they can do that. But if you really want to uh, work with the other side, you have to give in and you have to say, okay, uh, let's sit down and let's make a, a, a strategy plan. How often do we meet? And uh, even if we've got nothing to talk about, we'll eat a bowl of rice and just say mm -hmm. hello, you know, yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's, 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 it's on the small scale of individual businesses that it works like this, really. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also on, 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 on the highest levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can see that Chinese players, they are really good at that, definitely. So they just roll out the Belt and Road Initiative. They also get the they, they get the wrap up of the negotiations for the investment deal and so on. They're really good at that. It seems that European players are not that well prepared. They're oftentimes only like reacting almost by surprise to the events that China has already put into action or at least that's the that's the, the impression i don't know what your take on that is yeah well i think that if you if you do not regularly meet then you will be mm -hmm. surprised yeah. if you meet regularly you will know in advance what's coming mm -hmm. is that simple really yeah so you have to you have you to cannot, have a lot you cannot, please no, you have to have a lot of also informal meetings and, and, and chats. And as you said, eating bowls of rice, and then you would know that certain decisions would come. Is that what you mean? That's exactly what I mean. Yeah. Okay. And it's not only about paper and rules. Mm -hmm. You know, we very trust rules. I'm also a lawyer, so I should mm -hmm. trust rules, but I don't because I've been in China a lot. So I, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's very much about the relationship and keeping that good. Mm -hmm. And not just a piece of paper or a treaty or this or that, you know? So listening to you, I get the impression that China is quite open to invite the, the European players to these 
in meetings to these exchanges to finding a common space where there is the it's more the european players that are have difficulty adjusting to that pace of negotiation yes and it, it's true but of course as i said both sides are uh, a little um uh th th both sides want to conserve their own traditions in mm -hmm. in how to do business mm -hmm. the chinese also so the chinese are open um and i'm not saying that chinese should be more open or different but it's also that there's really a difference in culture of course between uh doing business in in your country or mine mm -hmm. uh, than doing business in china and mm -hmm. it, it's yeah it's just different Thank you.